This is my not so very good jointer planer combination and for a hobby woodworker like me it's okay. But now I think it's time for an upgrade. Hey cool, that actually worked. Yeah, something like this. Hmm. Maybe this works again. It's also time for a new lathe. A new lathe. Ah! Okay, old lathe. Okay, just this new machine. This is a Kitty 636, whatever these numbers mean, I have no idea. And it has a 25 centimeter wide cutter head, so it's a 25 centimeter jointer and planer. And let's go right down to business. The jointer is used to flatten rough lumber and make it straight. And the planer makes it parallel and to a consistent thickness. I got this machine used from eBay for about 400 euros and it was in amazing condition. This machine is probably more than 20 years old and no longer produced. At least not this exact machine. The three phase motor for it is separate and I don't know how much power it has. But for its size and weight, I'd guess something between 3 and 5 horsepower. Now, although it was in ready to use condition, I took it apart a little to at least clean the feed mechanism. And here I got it all taken apart and the parts ready for cleaning. And here the mechanism cleaned and reassembled. And the belt for the feed rollers. Cool thing is this machine has two different feed rates. Right now the feed rollers are disconnected from the cutter head and by activating this lever this puts tension on the belt and now it's connected. And right now this would be the faster feed rate and when I switch the belt to the smaller pulley here then I have a slower feed rate. Also the cover for the mechanism has a little access door right here which is exactly for that purpose to get access to the belt for switching the feed rates. Now putting the infit table back in place and no I'm not super strong but this is only cast aluminum light enough to do that alone. With a knob at the end you can adjust the cutting depth which works really smoothly and there's also an easy to read scale. Now unfortunately I can't just use the machine as it needs the motor and a good belt tension. A temporary setup just isn't possible. So I first had to make the stand or rather the cart for it. It will hold the motor, the machine and some storage drawers. And as much as I would have liked to use the new one I was forced to use the old jointer planer. Also I'm going relatively quickly about building the cart as the design of it is pretty much the same as the cart for the panther router that I'm using for the joinery. If you want to know more detail about the construction of the card, you should watch that video in which I cover it in detail. The short version is, I have two wooden frames that are box joint in the corners and these frames are then connected through some whales with mortise and tenon joints. Then there's a C-frame where the motor will be and with a plywood panel on top on which the machine sits. Unfortunately, I lost the audio of these clips. Sounds better than I forgot to switch on the camera mic. And have I mentioned that the motor is heavy? And time for wiring it up in star configuration if you're interested. Okay, got it wired up. So let's see if it works and if it's running right or left. Runs pretty good, but in the wrong direction. But because this is three phase power, that's a pretty simple fix. All I need to do is to switch two phases, and the switch has that built in. It's a little tricky to do that while watching the camera screen. And that's it. I've temporarily put everything together because I was really keen on testing the machine. And now I'll show more of the assembly. 
So I got all the parts sanded and finished and ready for final assembly. I think this motor is heavier than the whole machine. From the first test I already knew the correct position of the motor and could screw it down. Now the belt and the belt guard so that anything that's stored in here will never be able to touch the belt. The top panel has a cutout for the belt and two carriage bolts where the machine will be secured to. The machine will sit on these two aluminum rails where it can slide back and forth. And with this big screw, which is from the previous owner, I can move it back, which will then tension the belt. Because this is a flat belt, this needs a lot of tension. And of course this bolt has a size which I don't have a socket or a wrench for, so yeah, wooden wrench <laughs> does the job. I don't know if that's tight enough, but I guess we'll see. And now it gets secured to the base here with a washer and a lock nut. And same on the other side. The belt tracking also looks pretty good. Last thing missing is an exterior belt guard and therefore I made this here. Now the belt is fully enclosed, nothing can touch it, not from the inside, not from the outside. Now come the knives which are freshly sharpened and now need to be installed. To do that there are two holes in the cutter head for each knife for some springs. And then the blade itself which I only handle with gloves for obvious reasons. There unfortunately are no set screws so the blade is not just loosely held in place by the springs and I have to push it in the right place and then tighten it. Not very intuitive. I usually don't use any jig or calipers to set my jointer knives. I just use a ruler, let the blade grab it and move it by about 5 millimeters. After doing that on both sides, I then tighten down the other bolts. And after tightening down, I check again to make sure nothing has moved. Perfect. And the fence. And the blade guard. came out nice and smooth and now to check if it's straight I use the sliding table of my table saw as a reference surface and this looks pretty straight to me. Now a 2.5mm pass on some ash firewood. So jointing works, but dust collection for it, not so much. I think I should add this. This fits directly under the cutter head and hooks onto the thickness table. As you can see this comes all the way behind the cutter head, but I'm a little afraid that through a vibration this moves slightly forward and then maybe hits the spinning cutter head, which would be quite destructive. 
So to prevent that from ever happening, I install this piece right here. So now I can flip this up and secure the dust shroud so it can't come forward and touch the cutter head. The fence on here is relatively good, but it could be better. It can slide in and out with a 20mm shaft and that's really good, but the clamping thing is not so good. So, for example, right here I can set it square to the table, but then I pull it out and it is not square anymore because through the weight of the fence it tilts down a little bit because of the clamp here. Yeah, and that just doesn't work. And it can sag because the fence is a little bit over the infeed table and of course I could lower it all the way to the table but then it would scratch over it and I don't want that. So let me show you what I did to fix it. I drilled two holes in it and added these two plastic cam levers and on these the fence can now glide along the table and won't scratch it. And this also allowed me to really easily set the fence square to the outfit table. And again the piece of firewood. Alright, now time for planing. Therefore the outfit table flips out of the way and then I can attach the hand crank for the thickness table. There's another piece for the dust collection for planing which fits where previously the fence was. And the dust shroud for jointing now fits on here and is used for planing as well. This was the slower feed rate, let's test the faster one. And now this piece of firewood is flat and square on all four sides and usable lumber. The snipe from planing it is okay, from in feeding it there's pretty much no snipe and from out feeding yeah here about I can feel something and on the edge there is pretty much no snipe I don't know why but that's pretty cool one thing this planer is missing is a depth limiter so let's say I want to plane down this piece quite a bit but I have no reference where the maximum depth of cut is so if I set the table to here this just won't work it won't even fit under the kickback fingers and would actually plane down about 10 millimeters and that's just too much. So I drilled and tapped three holes into the casting here and made my own. This now limits the maximum depth of cut to three millimeters which is also the maximum for jointing so that should be fine. And now this should work. I've been using this machine with this setup for about two weeks and I really like it, especially the powerful motor. I can join or plane full with boards and it doesn't even think about slowing down. That's perfect. Also all the mechanisms work really well, so adjusting the jointing and the thickness table, the fence, the two feed rates, everything flawless, except for the guard, because at the moment it's not height adjustable and just hold in place by a spring. And I would really like to be able to adjust it to the right workpiece height. But that should be a rather simple fix. So yeah, I'm overall really happy. And also the build quality is great. As it's mostly the case with older machinery like this. Money well spent. This will see a lot of use. And this big screw is from the previous owner with which you can move the machine in this direction and this will tension the blade belt.